Hey guys, this is Chris, Stratomatic Delaware, and today we are going over how to play inside pitch baseball. This is going to be the first video of a series of videos <clears throat> introducing you to what I have found to be a very pleasant, enjoyable, fun, and relatively easy to learn game. So let's go ahead and get into it. First, we're going, well, we're going to go over uh, we're going to go through the rule book as it is. We'll go a certain amount and then we'll stop. And this is probably going to be three or four different videos, perhaps. Um, um, but I want to tell you how to find out about this game. Go to insidesportsgames.org.org. <clears throat> Chris Davis out in Idaho has created these games, and they are fantastic. Um, inside Pitch, Inside Blitz is a football game, an NFL football game. There are other games on the site, but I've got an Inside Pitch, and I wanted to share it with you. So let's go ahead and, uh, like I said, you uh, order the game parts and the rules and everything, and then you can order PDFs of the seasons and print them out yourself or have them printed out, or you can order printed cards for the seasons that are available and he's got a lot of seasons available um back into the 50s if i recall correctly up in the current day so without any further ado um when you get the rule book printed out you'll be able to follow along and we're going to just go through the rule book as we do um and on the first page getting started you'll need two six-sided dice which are referred to as 2d6 of different colors and one 20-sided die which would be referred to as 1d20. Um, Chris says he personally uses red and white for the 2d6 and blue for the 1d20, which I actually like the red, white, and blue, so I did as well. Um, then we have the cards. We are going to first go over the batter's card. Uh, you will have the name of the batter. In this case, we've got 1984 Detroit and San Diego. So we've got 84 Kirk Gibson. The batter's name will appear here. Uh, the year, the season, and the team he played for. So 1984 Detroit. Uh, what side of the plate he hits from, and also his injury rating. Um, outcomes versus, question mark outcomes versus lefties and righties are right here. We'll show you how to use those later, but, the, later, but those are question mark outcomes. This is... Uh, up here, positions he played. Uh, after the hyphen, the first number is the range that he had at that position from 1 to 5. Um, if it's a catcher, there will be two numbers. Well, it would probably be the same number, but there will be two numbers separated by a slash, just like this. And on a catcher's card, the first is his range at the position. The second is his passed ball rating. So you may see that on a catcher's card. The second number in parentheses is his error rating. So he didn't commit. He's not committing errors in center field. Um, but this is on a rate from 0 to 20. So you'll roll the D20 in order to determine errors. You'll roll a D6 to determine range, a D20 to determine errors. The third one is going to be for catchers and outfielders. That's going to be his arm. For second base and shortstop, that will be their pivot rating. Um, if their ability to turn a double play, if they add anything to it or take anything away from it. Uh, first baseman and third baseman, you will see no number here. No arm, no pivot. Um, we go down here. This is the batter's matrix, the batting matrix. And how you would find a result, first you would read uh, one D6 and then the other D6. The first D6 will be which column you're going to look in. The second D6 is which row you're going to look in. So say we have 6-1, we'll look in column 6, row number 1, S8. That's how you read the batter's matrix. And that's also how you read the pitching matrix on the pitcher's cards. Um, so that is the same thing. Uh, next we go down to um, strikeout, walk, and home run ratings versus left or right-handed pitchers. 
Um, these are D20s. So anytime you have to roll for a strikeout check, you need to roll this or lower. It's a strikeout. If you roll above that, it is not a strikeout. So 1 through 10 would be a strikeout. 11 and up would not be a strikeout. For walks, 1 through 12 would be a walk. 13 on up on a D20, not a walk. Homers, 1 to 16 on a D20 is a homer. 17 to 20, not a homer. So that's how you would do that. Strikeout, walk, and home run check ranges versus left and right-handed pitchers. Then you have the base running rating, scale of 1 to 5. Uh, bunting rating, attempt rating, uh, for certain strategy roles this will help determine whether or not a base runner is going to attempt a stolen base and if he does attempt a stolen base this is his base stealing rating. Uh, ground into double play rating, sacrifice fly rating, and hit by pitch rating. And then of course down here you have stats so you can see how often they played, how well they played in real life. Let's move on to the pitcher's cards. Of course you have the name. Um, for National League and for more current with interleague play and older before DH, if there are two pound signs, that means this pitcher has his own batting card. They are provided in the PDF or with the cards if you order them printed. Season and team. Um, side of the side he pitches from, he's a lefty. Um, injury rating, hit by pitch rating. Uh, up here you'll see a position, pitcher. Three is going to be his range. Thirteen is his error rating. So the range will be right next to pitcher and in parentheses, just like on the batting cards, the error rating. Uh, it'll show how many times he started in a season. The number next to that, there's two numbers before and after a slash. This is how many batters he can face before he gets tired. And this is his poll number. And we'll explain that later. And if he's able to start, he'll have a starter rating here. If he's able to relieve, he'll have a relief rating here. Relief, how many relief appearances. His number of batters he can face before he becomes tired or fatigued, if you want to use that term, but it's tired is what Chris Davis uses with inside pitch and his poll number, which we'll explain that again later as well. Um, here you have a section used for automatic outs and for ball location on hitters and ballpark cards. Um, anytime you see the two stars show up like that, like say if you're making a roll in this area or if it shows up in a result or if it shows up here, you're going to go to this section right here to get your at-bat resolved. The pitching matrix, again, you uh, roll 2d6, you determine which column and then which row in that column. Uh, here you have your home run chances, and this can be used anytime there is a home run with a question mark. Uh, anytime it's a home run, you're just going to check the batter's home run rating. Anytime it's a home run question mark, you check both the pitcher and the batter's home run rating in succession. And we'll explain how to do that later. And then the question marks, that is your double question mark ranges against left and right handed batters. Sometimes it'll be two asterisks, two stars, which will result here. Sometimes it'll show a single. Um, so it could be a single if a D20 falls within that range. <coughs> we'll explain that later. Uh, here in this row, you have wild pitch rating, past ball rating. Um, this is basically a hold rating, uh, and um, and uh, let me explain this now. You're going to see slashes in various places in the matrixes. Um, what that is, there's a number to the left of it, uh, a result to the left of it, a result to the right of it. Anything on the left side of a slash is for a batter, it's versus a left-handed pitcher versus a right-handed pitcher versus a left-handed pitcher versus a right-handed pitcher. On a pitcher's card versus a left-handed batter versus a right-handed batter. So anytime you see a slash left-right, uh, that determines which reading you go with. 
Um, so with the stolen bases, if he is facing a left-handed batter, it's plus one is his hold rating. If he's facing a right-handed batter, it's minus one. Uh, ground into double play rating, GDP. Balk rating. Uh, pickoff rating. Pickoff error rating. Uh, and then down here, of course, you got real life stats so you can see how often they played, how well they played. That is pretty much page one. Page two, we are going to cover different results that you will find here in the batting matrices and also how to resolve them on the cards. So we are going to uh, go in order. Uh, in the rule book so that way you can see how to resolve it and then we'll go through the batting uh, the field card the stadium card and then we're going to call that video one so just another few minutes for this one top of the next page playing the game the play is resolved by rolling 2d6 first on the pitcher's card for the pitch so you always start with the pitcher's card then you may have to go to the batter's card or to the stadium card the field card so you roll the d6 and we get three six and we're starting on the pitcher's card. So you would look at column three, because that's what I use for the column. Kind of like uh, rolling APBA. Roll the red, read the red, then the white. It's just, it's simpler because it's a system I already use. Column three, row six is home run question mark. Um, let's see, dice are read as column first, then row. These numbers reference a box in the pitching matrix as we just described to you. Uh, the 1D20 is used to resolve any ratings checks by the hitters for K, W, or HRs. Ks, Ws, or HRs. And let me uh, also point out <clears throat> what this is, and this is going to make a whole lot more sense what's in these. And it's really intuitive. Uh, for example, K is a strikeout, W is a walk, HR is a home run, um, E is an error. Uh, RP on the pitcher's card is a range play, and you're going to check the range of the defender that is indicated with another roll. We'll show you how to do that. Uh, LHB, left-handed batter, RHB, right-handed batter, wild pitch, pass ball, stolen base, grounded double play, uh, balk, uh, ground ball, anything with a G is a ground ball, anything with an F is a fly ball, and then it indicates the position, six, shortstop, A, center field, four, second base, five, third base. It's very easy to read, fly to right, uh, ground ball back to the box, G1. S is a single, D is a double, T is a triple. Uh, L, line out to four, second base. Uh, D9, double to right. S4, single past the second baseman. F7, fly out to left. Uh, S9, single to right. F7, fly out to left. F8, fly out to center. G6, ground ball to the shortstop. It's easy to read. It makes sense. It really does. And then you need to get to where you're going to be able to figure out um, what to do after you have this initial result. Most times that's all you need. Uh, if you see the two stars with a four, anytime you see the two stars, you're looking here on the pitcher's card. So two stars with a four, you're looking at two stars, number four, ground ball to the third baseman. Two stars with a one, two stars, number one ground ball to the shortstop. So anytime you see two stars, you're going to come here. If you see two stars and no number, simply re-roll. Look at the red die, six. It's a fly ball to right. Uh, but anyway, results that you can get from the pitcher's matrix. Um, first is S1. And that is, a. if you see just an S1, it's a single hit past a pitcher. If you see an S1 with parentheses, single pass to pitcher only if the pitcher is considered tired. Okay? The pitcher is tired if he has pitched this many or more, if he has pitched past his tired number of batters. So if Dave Dravecki is starting, he can go 24 at uh, batters before he gets tired. Number 25, he's tired, and this would be a single. Uh, however, if he is not tired, consider it blank. 
Now, anytime there is a blank here on the pitcher's card, anytime there is a blank or anytime it tells you to consider it blank, you're going to go to the batter's card, re-roll, and get the result from the batter's card, 1-5, question 7, which you would go to this range up here. He's a lefty versus left-handed question. Roll the D20 to see if there's a hit. If it's above any of these ranges, like 19 and 20, then that would be a fly ball to left. We'll go over that again. Um, but again, yeah, we uh, explained what to do with the double asterisks. I call it chaos. <laughs> so if you ever see me playing a game and you hear me say chaos five, I mean double star five, and I'm looking right here. That's chaos. Um, the double question mark is a split rating for... Let's see. Double question mark is a split rating for a hit or chaos. Um, on the pitcher's card versus the side of the hitter in the question mark section, which is right here. So it could be a hit. It could be chaos. It's going to be one or the other. Some pitchers will have, like I said earlier, single 1 to 12. Some might have single 1 and two stars there, or they may have nothing for one side or the other. But anytime you get the two question marks, you're going to look here, you're going to roll a d20, and you're going to see if it's in this range. If it's in that range, you're going to use that result, the two stars, and then figure out which one you're going to look at, number five. If it is outside of this range, consider it blank, just like these, go to the batter's card. Uh, if you have a an A sign like that, I never know what the heck the thing is called. That is when you go to the ballpark cards. So anytime you have this, you're going to go to the ballpark card. And we'll cover the ballpark cards as soon as we're done with uh, the batting matrix symbols and the hitting matrix symbols coming right up. We're going right down the list. E question mark is a possible error. Proceed to the batter's card and resolve the play. Using a 1D20 to check for error on fielding player on all plays. So if there is an error that comes up, let's say we have rolled 4-6 and we get this result here. Then you're going to roll and look at the batter's card. 3-6, it's a single to right. Well, singles, you can't have an error. That won't count. You'll just take the single. However, if you roll 3-3 and it's G1, it's a ground ball to the pitcher, but you need to check and make sure whether there's been an error or not. 3-3, I'm sorry. And he's versus a lefty. That's another single. So we're going to say that was 2-3. We're going to say that was 2-3. G1. So whenever you get an error, you're going to go here to find out where the error might occur. If it results in a hit, D9, a double to right, no error is going to happen. That's a base hit. But if it results in a defensive player's making the play, you're going to check for an error. We'll show you how to do that later. <clears throat> E.G. Error on a grounder. So if you roll and it's a ground ball, then there's a possibility for an error. If instead it was a pop out to short or a fly to left, then no error is going to occur with E.G. because that's on a ground ball only. ET is a possible error on a throwing play, which is pretty much ground balls. So a G1 could be susceptible to an ET because the pitcher's got to throw it first. Uh, pop out, a fly out, a line drive, no throwing, so ET will not matter. But you won't know that until you roll and find out where on the pitch on the batting matrix the play is going to happen. And again, of course, on hits, nothing. Uh, HP is a possible hit by pitch and you will check to find out um, how to do the hit by pitch which we will get to that there's a good section that describes what to do with each of these and we'll get to that uh, HR is a possible home run just HR possible home run which you will check by consulting the batter's card HR question mark is a possible home run, but you must first consult the pitcher's card 
and then the batter's card. Um, we'll show you how to do that. K is a possible strikeout. One thing to keep in mind, these are all chances. There's a chance of an error. There's a chance of a strikeout, a chance of a walk, a chance of a home run. It doesn't mean it happened. It means there's a chance you still need to determine if it happened. Um, K, if we've got one here, K with a W in parentheses. It means it's a chance for a strikeout unless the pitcher is tired. You see parentheses um, around the single and around the walk. Unless the pitcher is tired, then it's a chance for a walk. Um, K plus, and it's the same with walks. If you get a W for walk, it's a chance for a walk. Um, with K plus, which I don't see a K plus on Dravecki's card, but there's a W plus like that. A K plus would be a K with a plus on the end of it. Anytime you bring one of these up, you're going to check on the batter's card, but you're going to add 10 to their range. So a K plus means you're going to strike him out. A W plus means he's going to get the walk because you're adding 10 to that and rolling a D20 to see if it's between 1 and whatever that number is. Um, RP, again, is a range play. If you get RP, you are going to roll the dice. Look over here. Well, it's a single to 9, so it's not successful. But say it was a 6-6, six, six, it's a line out to uh, second base. RP, you're going to check his range, which is this number here, to see whether he made the play. Now, RP and this little A symbol means you are going to go to the ballpark card. Roll again. 3-1, G3, you're going to check the range because it's RP, the range on the first baseman. Uh, S1 just without these parentheses. S1 is a single pass to pitcher. Uh, w is a possible walk. W plus is a possible walk, adding 10 to the walk rating. Uh, WLD, that is where you get possibilities for wild pitches or passed balls. And we'll show you how to determine that as well. Um, it states in the middle of the page, if no direct outcome or a failed rating check comes up, go to the batter's card. Rolling 2d6 again with the dice. Read the outcome first, the, first the row. Read the outcome column first, then row for a box on the batter's matrix. The 1d20 here is used to resolve the split hits in any error outcomes that need to be checked. Outcomes are as follows in the batting matrix. Um, anytime you have two stars and a number, you're going to go to the pitcher's card in the two star section and go to that number, fly to right. Anytime there is a split hit number, which is a question mark, that's a split hit number, you're going to go up in this area right here, left handed pitcher. It's a split hit, so 1 to 3 would be a single, 4 to 12 a double, three to 13 to 15 a triple, 16 to 18 a home run. And anything above the top range is going to be a fly out to the number, the position indicated next to the split hit indicator. Um, of course, uh, as we said earlier, D is double, F is a fly out, G is a ground out. Uh, H, which there aren't any on here, but if you have an H, that would be a home run. Um, K would be a strikeout, like right here. Or if it showed up here, K would be a strikeout. Um, L is a line out. P is a pop out. S would indicate a single. And anytime you've got this, S slash G4 for versus a left-handed pitcher versus a right-handed pitcher, both of those happen past the second baseman. Against a right-handed pitcher, it's a ground ball to the second baseman. Against a left-handed pitcher, it's a single past the second baseman. <coughs> T is for triple. 
and W were it to show up here or these here as well would be for a walk. Um, number of the position okay the number sign it, it's talking about what's in the key here all right and it also notes that only players with at least 40 at bats or batters faced from each side are given split ratings so some players with very limited at bats or batters faced will not have split ratings <clears throat> go to the next page and we're doing the ballpark cards uh, each ballpark for every year has been given a card that represents that ballpark. Each card has possible adjustments to the K, W, and H, R ratings of the hitters. These are possible adjustments. Um, in Tiger Stadium, if you have to check a strikeout, Tiger Stadium adds three to this range, so it makes a strikeout more likely being in Tiger Stadium. Plus one to walks, so it makes a walk slightly more likely. Home run, zero. Most ballparks are going to have home run, zero, because most of your home run adjustments are going to be in the ballpark matrix. Um, dom da dom whenever a K, a K+, plus, a W, a W+, plus, or a home run come up on the pitcher's card, use these adjustments to the hitter's K, W, and HR ratings to resolve the play. The ballpark cards are referred to any time in at symbol comes up in the pitcher's matrix role. Um, here we have Tiger Stadium. You know, have the name of the stadium, uh, the the year and uh, the year of the season, and also the city. Um, anytime a question mark comes up, that's your split check. You're going to go up here to the split check and roll. Uh, 1 to 9 is a single, 10 is a double, 11 to 13 is a triple, 14 to 18 is a home run, 19 and 20, anything above that range would be a fly ball to 7. And those are pretty much only going to happen to um, plays to the outfield. Uh, you're going to have, of course, your ballpark matrix, um, column, and then row, where in the column you're going to read. So 3, 1, 3, one as an example uh, ballpark adjustments home run changes are rare it says that in the rule book here and then ballpark stats uh, runs per game scored per team 4.33 batting average 252 slugging 386 homers 154 out of the out of tiger stadium in 1984 <coughs> okay Possible results here. Uh, if you have a blank on the ballpark matrix, this doesn't mean that you go to the hitter. This means that it is a rare play. And you are going to have a rare play chart. And the rare play chart will either indicate for use when bases are empty or when there are men on base. And then you will roll the two dice and in same fashion use that to determine which rare play has happened and resolve it. Um, then you've got, of course, chaos. Two asterisks and a number. That means you go back to the pitcher's card. Number two, fly out to center. Uh, split hit number roll, which is the question mark. You go right up there. HR is a possible home run. HR, just HR. And I don't see an HR in Tiger Stadium. I see pole, opposite, and uh, straight away to center. But if there was just, like with the brackets around him, if there was just an HR, that would be a possible home run to the field shown in the question mark. I don't see a question mark. That's okay. It's in the uh, rule book here. We have HR8, a possible home run to center. Uh, HRP, which is a possible home run to the pole side. So a left-hander like Kurt Gibson, it's a possible homer to right. HRO is to the opposite side, so a possible homer to left, the opposite field. 
Then, of course, you have uh, D for a double. Which I don't see a D here, but it's the same as the other. And D stands for a double. F is a fly out. G is a ground out. L is a line out. P is a pop out. Uh, S is a single. I saw a single right there. T is a triple. I don't see any triples here, but that's what T stands for, like up there. S plus and a number. You may see S plus 9, S plus 8, S plus 7. This is where a single can be stretched out into a double, and it's hit to that position. And we'll show you how to resolve that later. Okay, um, examples of plays from the cards. We're going to, we've shown you what the cards look like, and we're going to call this video right here. So this is video one, introducing you to rolling the dice, the cards, and the symbols on the cards. Next, we are going to cover how to determine the outcome of some at-bats as a result of some of these results in the matrix. So we're going to head and call that. This is video number one for Inside Pitch Baseball, how to play. And again, this is Chris, Dramatic Delaware. Like the video if you uh, found it useful. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. Uh, please uh, hit the little dinger bell thingy if you would like to know whenever content is uploaded. Share me with your friends. And again, this is Chris, Dramatic Delaware. Guys, keep on rolling.